that's you decide bbc eurovision you decide six artists three songs a big decision should we talk about it let's do it Guys, the time has come. We have the six artists. We have three duels or song offs, as they say. So we are going to discuss each duel and choose our favorite song slash act. It's Chris in London, Lucy up north, and me in my house. You guys, let's kick it off. Song check number one, Michael Rice versus Holly Tandy. You will never be alone. It's bigger than He, of course, won that show. We're in this together. All together, what was it? Together now? All together now, yeah. There we go. Clearly, yeah. we all watched it. And then <laughs> she competed on X Factor. As a 15-year-old, they both have big fa fan bases. The song is Bigger Than Us. I'm going to say the song's not bigger than either of them. They're perhaps bigger than the song. In any case, Chris, start us off. Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting song. It seems a lot like they thought, well, we didn't choose Nobody But You last year in the end, and maybe we should have, so let's just send this instead. Um, you can tell uh, there was a lot of John Lundvik kind of influence in there. You know, you think about My Turn last year, you can hear that a little bit in it too. Um, I think Michael's version I like a little bit more just because... Um, I, I think that would probably be the best result for the UK. Out of all of these songs, I think it would get the best result. Um, Holly, I like it, but I just don't think it's really a country-tinged song. It obviously feels like it's meant to have that gospel-ish choir going on in the background. I like both versions enough, but they don't blow me away. Um, clearly, they both have great voices. Michael, obviously, I think has a lot of BBC support anyway. He just won like a really big show for them last year, one of their big debuts. So I wouldn't be surprised if he were to win um, or at least to get through this song off. Um, but yeah, neither of them blow me away in terms of the song, but good voices. It'll be interesting to see what they do live, if they can replicate that. Particularly, obviously, we know you can't have a big choir on stage. You're only going to have five backing singers, so they're going to need to really work on that, I think. Lucy and Lester. Hey, hey. Um, out of the two, I think Holly Tandy's a lot more 2019. I think... As soon as I heard the other version, I just straight away that keychain went down my key change, sorry, went down my spine. I was like, no, why? Um, I think it's a I think his voice is magnificent. I didn't watch altogether now, but he's got a gorgeous voice and he looks nothing like what I thought he would when I saw the picture. Um, but he he's great, but I just I'm not Ari Olufsen, but it's got that cheesiness to it that makes me go a little bit. I, I was, I just thought it was perfectly pleasant, but nothing like pow. Um, whereas with Holly, again, it is the same song, so it's going to be still along the same vein. But it was a lot more interesting, a lot more now. I think Eurofans would get on board with her a lot more. Although it must be said, all over the OGAE group this morning, everyone is loving. I completely forgot his name, Rice. Um, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, sorry. Um, they, I know OJ were absolutely loving him. He's leading the poll on um, the UK editions page. So I think he will probably win it. Um, but I do think Holly Tandy is... And also, I think she's got a bigger fan base because I think X Factor is a huge show that some people will watch snippets of it at some point in the season. Like, I'm not an X Factor watcher, but I knew exactly who she was. I, 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 maybe it's just because it's a new show, but I do think Holly will have a will have a bigger fan base than, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I do prefer Holly's version, definitely. 
This song is very X Factor winner's single. This is crafted for TV, well, a TV show, like reality singing show, and I think that's the problem. In Sweden, they craft their songs for the radio, for Spotify, for hits. This is not crafted for that. This is someone saying, and it's a team of people, including people from Sweden, <laughs> who are saying, what will do well at UK Eurovision, you decide. And I'm sorry, that should not be the bar. The bar should be higher than that. The bar should be radio hit, Melody Festival. Now, I'm, John Lubick is lovely, honey. Laurel Barker, I love her. They are amazing. I just think this song is maybe not my cup of tea. Um, I went on a keto diet recently. You may have noticed I'm looking very gaunt. So I don't eat rice. I eat Kali rice, so my vote's going to Holly Tandy. That's Holly Tandy. I think the country pop version is very current and very now, and she makes it feel more than an X Factor single. It feels more like something you'd hear on the radio right now, as opposed to the male version. He does, Michael does a great job, don't get me wrong, but I feel like it's a different direction, and I want to go in her direction. I won't say it's got the Taylor Swift, Miley Cyrus vibe, which she says in her quote, but I think it's leaning toward that or striving for that, which is admirable. And I also think she's got some charisma to her. There's something likable about her. Like, I follow her on the social and on an Instagram, and I just really like seeing her updates. So she's kind of the girl next door who can sing. Um, I think she's in there with the shot. But it's curious, even on our Twitter poll, Michael Rice is demolishing her. We have a Twitter poll going, and he is really, really a favorite, um, which surprised me. Yeah, I think it reminds me, uh, Michael's version reminds me a lot. Actually, the start reminds me of um, Storm as well, that piano like intro thing. It, I, I was trying to place so it, I was like, oh yeah, it's really like the original version of Storm for some reason. Um, it reminds me a lot of like various different You Decide songs from the past. And I think that is the issue because a lot of the time our big complaint about You Decide has been you're clearly just trying to make a song and fit it into this Eurovision mold. And this feels a little bit like a Frankenstein version of that. Um, but I can see why a lot of people like him. And I do think that live, he will kill it. The one thing we always have to remember, every time we've said who the favorite is going in, it's they've never won. Asanda did drop like a stone. Um, the year before that, we had like Darlene, I remember them, the country song that they had, that didn't go anywhere. Every year, it's never who we thought was going to win, so I'm not going to try and predict it that much. But yeah, maybe the formulaic thing we think is going to win isn't going to win, so. Yeah, I mean, again, another example, Olivia Garcia, do not even get me started. Um, what a glorious song that was, but hey. Um, but yeah, I just... Like you say, it is like a formulaic. That's the perfect word for it. It is literally they've just. I think they've just tried to craft a song based on. I'm trying to think of the right words for it, but it's just kind of. It is just so generic. I think. I think it's got some interesting lyrics though. I think they're like nice. Like, there's some really like gorgeous lyrics, but I do think with Michael's version it comes off as cheesy, whereas in Holly's version it's a bit cooler. Like yeah, that's, that's yeah. Yes, we move on to song off number two. This is Jordan Clark versus Maid. Now, that's not a cleaner. That's not a reference to cleaning your house. Those are the initials of the ladies, I believe, in the group. Yeah, Miracle, Blythe, and Cat. Actually, I don't see a K, so maybe that's not. <laughs> <laughs> so that can't be true. In any case, the song is called Freaks. We are the freaks. I know a place where the bruised and broken live like the kings and the queens of tragedy. Just freaks like you and me. We are the freaks. And I'm going to kick this off because the song kind of brings together three elements from Eurovision that we often talk about. You know, mixing languages. At one point, it's you, me, to vu. A little cheesy, doesn't seem to fit. At another point, you know, there's this Ari Olafson Iceland, we are the world moment. You know, it's all touchy-feely, happy, love, love, peace, peace. And the third one is kind of the bad rhyming, like locker, soccer. So it's like, let's put all these things on a list that we need to tick off and then do them. And by the way, this is UK Eurovision, you decide. 
We don't play soccer here, y'all. We play football, okay? As an American, I was like, was this written in LA? It didn't make sense. That said, I actually like the melody of the chorus. It's very CBBC. Like, this is not BBC Broadcasting House. This is CBBC kind of news round for the kids. But there's something likable about the chorus, and I've been humming it all day. See, it's the only one I remember. Um, and, and I know this is probably the most loathed of the three songs based on social media, but to me it's the most likable. However, this is not a popular, you know, a congeniality contest. This is about, you know, something that could get the crowds moving, get the crowds hopping. Personally, this is my favorite song. Shade Brigade, come for me. Shade Brigade, come. However, I don't want this to win because I don't think it would do well at Eurovision. To wrap this up, I prefer Jordan. It seems to fit with his voice. It's quirky, kooky, da 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 da. The ladies, it sounds a little goth. Like, vampires are alive and they have been reincarnated. Three lovely singers. But something about those harmonies, it's just very haunting and not in a good way. Haunting in the teenage horror flick way, which again, doesn't feel right for Eurovision. In any case, great voices interesting song and I mean that in the English kind of you know we mean something but we don't mean something way you know it's interesting Chris this is the worst song ever entered into you decide I'm sorry I and I, I, maybe it's not because I think of that terrible a better man song from like the first one but genuinely if there is who would enter this for Eurovision I'm really sorry. Like, there is no way this would ever get to Eurovision. This would come dead last at Eurovision. In Moldova. It, 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 genuinely terrible. Like, it, the, Jordan's version sounds like a kid's bot version of a My Chemical Romance song from 2006. <laughs> Their song, the Maid song, sounds like um, All Stars Bump in the Night. Do you remember All Stars? No, nobody does apart from me, apparently. But it's literally just abysmal and I feel really bad because they the girls have good voices they have really nice harmonies there's some weird vocal pronunciations to make things work they go like soccer it's like no that it oh and it's so clearly I think this is a rejected album song from somebody else and that it's been ported here which is why they say soccer because if it was written for the UK at Eurovision you wouldn't say that this is a clearly a reject from something else and that's why it's here and it's nowhere in Europe because I'm pretty certain everywhere in Europe calls it football as well so just really really bad um do I have a preferred version probably Jordan's too because um I think he has a slightly better vocal on it but genuinely just it is not good it is really really bad and i cannot believe that there was not joust had a better song and i don't care whether or not he was like disqualified for this reason or that reason i don't care just bring it back do something with it because that was better than this monstrosity of a song and i feel sorry for the artist because clearly they are very good. They are talented. They've done things like Britain's Got Talent before. Give them something more worthy. Um, I don't agree with the general consensus that this is the worst you decide ever because the first one was worse. But this is, I think, the worst song that's ever been in you decide. This would come dead last in at Eurovision. And in Selecta Nationala, and in O Melody Pintro Europa, and in Supernova, and in Esti La Lucy. Ah. Uh... Just right. I'm so glad both of you mentioned the soccer thing because saying soccer in a British song is as offensive to British people as putting the milk in first in a cup of tea. Oh my god. Oh, right. I think that's what pretty much every all the Brit British stan Twitter are saying, like, oh, as soon as they said soccer. Um, but it's just so genuinely poor. Like, I think it's just, oh. But again, it's, I mean, I'm going to disagree with what you said, Chris. I don't think this, you just, I think in you decide, at least in 2016, they had Bianca and hey, I liked Joe and Jake. I voted for them. No shame. Um, oh, that was good. That I was good. Jake. I still love Joe and Jake. So I just, I'm, I'm going to pitch 2016. Although it had that weird song on first, it was, there were still standout songs in it. I think this year, again, Freaks has just really made it go. Ugh, because whilst, 
I don't remember anything about Jordan's version, actually. I've listened to it like quite a lot of times this morning. So I'm going to say the girls purely for that reason. I'm going to say May because I remember just thinking budget OG, like the whole time I was listening to it. I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> I thought we had that last year at you. This <laughs> is budget Goldstone. <laughs> okay. We went from, I don't know, Tesco to Little to Aldi or something. I, Anyway. <laughs> I mean, you know what? They are you can tell they are so talented, but this this song for them was really bad. Like it doesn't work with the whole three piece female harmony. It just doesn't work at all. And yeah, I like I say, I genuinely I just don't remember anything about Jordan's version. I just remember being horrified by the song when I was listening to it, because that was the first of the two to be announced. Um I was just thinking, please say the other version of this is like I don't know, teen punk, I don't care, bring it, whatever, just anything but this. So I, I think into my mind's like, Ugh, about Jordan. So I am going to say made, um, but it's just those, I, you know, I don't have anything positive to say. I just don't. <laughs> so just a quote from the made singers, Freaks is about celebrating everyone's individual personality, about the people who maybe don't fit in, and it's about bringing everyone together. Our version of Freaks is quite ethereal and dark. Now, look, we all respect the message. However, there are ways to present a message that are less cringe. I think use of the word freak in itself just sounds very strange in a song. It just sounds very awkward. I mean, it works for freak like me, freak in the morning, freak in the evening, but that's in a different genre. And also, they're going for dark pop. It's again, like people said, ooh, Blanche, City Lights, that was dark pop. That's current at Eurovision. Let's have one of those. And let's have one of these. As opposed to, as Suri suggested in Lucy's interview with her, Finding artists who also write songs, who write a song that works for them, their style, their genre, their feeling, their mood, their meaning. You can tell that things were paired together. This is like that show Naked Attraction. And guess what? Most of the days don't work out. Okay, we're seeing everything. We're seeing vag, we're seeing pubes, we're seeing it all right now, and it ain't cute. It ain't cute. Final thoughts on this song, off. I think, yeah, I, very much that point. You know, I think maybe they're trying to go for a Sarah Alto Monsters kind of thing where, you know, they think, oh, well, that was popular with the UK fans because it had monsters in the title. Let's call this one Freaks, work from there. Like, it just, I do not understand it. That This was clearly another one where it was by design and they had this, like, positive message, but it just got horribly mangled somewhere along the way. Um, nobody is going to want to be like, you know, oh, my fans are the freaks. No, you, that's not a thing that anybody is going to say. Like, it works for freak like me. You're right, because that's a whole song about, you know, getting nasty Sex. and things like that. <laughs> so it works for that, but not as a positive, uplifting message. I cannot think of a song at Eurovision which has had a title like that or that kind of message and they've gone so literal. Don't, no, no, no. <laughs> Do you reckon Mont Selmala told him like, hey, I did a song about bullying. Perhaps you guys could do a song about uh -huh. bullying. And then they just dragged this out from some hideous corner somewhere. Like, <laughs> oh. I, I just feel, final point, I feel bad for the ladies because they're clearly yeah. very talented, as y'all both said. Oh, God. They've got so all the talent in the world. And I think they saw an opportunity. They took it good for them. But, you know, let's just hope something else positive comes from this experience. Like, I just get... think we can all agree this isn't going to be the UK song unless something really awful happens. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, now we turn to song off number three. This is, this is making a move, y'all. The song is Sweet Lies, Carrie Ann versus Anissa. Carrie Ann is taking my cake. This is a song that seems to have been written for her voice. It feels organic to her. 
I mean, let's not lie, the song is generic. It sounds like that song Sweet Sweet Lovin' just changed to Sweet Sweet Lies. It, who is that, Segalia? I don't remember. I think of Azmik from Armenia. But Sweet Sweet Lovin', I'm loving you. It sounds like it's from another era, but it's a guilty pl Actually, it's not a guilty pleasure. There's no guilt. There, this is a pleasure. It's fun. I think it's horribly dated. I don't think it would do well at Eurovision. But I think, you know, UK fans could dance to this, get behind this, have fun with this. And that's enough. It does, you know, you, you, we're not going for the win this year, let's face it. We're not. We're going to have fun and be able to get behind an act. And I could get behind this, you know, wholeheartedly and say, she's got something. This woman has something. She, there's a spark, a fire. Um, I just love her attitude. I can't wait to hear this live because I can see her really giving this life. Anissa, I know she co-wrote Piano for Ariana Grande, but that was Piano for Ariana Grande. That was not Sweet Lies for Anissa. I think Anissa's very talented. I think she's wonderful. She's gotten lots of, you know, plaudits in the past. One, like, BBC, what, the, the Asian Network gave her an award or something. She's, like, very much held in high regard. It's just, it passes me by. I had this on, and I was brushing my teeth. I shaved my face. I did my nails, and I didn't even realize it was on. It just, it's background music, that version. And her version is described um, as an emotional ballad. Sorry, emotions imply some kind of internal movement. There was no movement. It was... It was a rock. It was static. A statue. Um, and I just feel bad for her because she's above this. Yeah, it's like, she, I, I feel sorry because she's, uh, you know, from Manchester, so I have to rep the hometown a little bit. Um, I think, you know, she could really surprise, like, if she's got an amazing live vocal, you know, we've seen it before with, like, Lucy Jones, where nobody was really predicting a lot from that, and then live, she killed it. Same in a way with Surrey last year. Um... But, oh my God, Carrie Ann's version. Like, it's, like, 2008 Gay Club. Like, this is the song that everybody would be getting up and dancing to. And that's great. I mean, it, it has no pretenses that it's anything but that. Whereas I think some of the other ones are really trying for something more. Just accept it. Like, I think, again, we're not going to win. We're not going to do well. Who cares? Let's have a party. You know, I would love to listen to this and Lavender and get drunk and for them both to be on the Eurovision soundtrack. That'd be a great party soundtrack as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think if they go all in and just make it as camp as possible with the staging and just own that vibe... I will love this, and I think it would be amazing. I, I I would want it to win. I don't think it will do well at Eurovision. I think it would probably be bottom two, bottom three. Um, but I wouldn't care because I would enjoy it. And if I could honestly say I would enjoy having to sit through the rehearsals of any of those other songs when I'm in Tel Aviv, I won't. This I would. Mm. I mean, I think it's kind of important to state that with Carrie Ann's version, both Kerry Ann and, uh, oh my God, I've completely forgot the name of the song. Ah! Sweet Lie. Both Kerry Ann and Sweet Lie were UK trends earlier, which, as everybody knows, the UK and Eurovision, that's major. Like, <laughs> both of them were trends. Nothing else was trending, kind of, on the other songs or um, the other artists. Um, I do think her version, it reminds me of, and I can't remember the name of the song, I unfortunately think it's sung by someone called Booty Love, and it's like, I found a place. You know what I mean? Oh, but, yeah. Well, we can book it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight away, I was like, yeah, that's that's what that is to me. And it's like, it's a banger, but it's not Fuego, is it? Like, it's it's still, it's the best of a interesting bunch. Um, I do think it is the best to send. And like you say, it isn't going to do that great. But yeah, it's going to be awesome in the Euro Club. It's going to be great at Eurovision in concert. It is going to be a banger. People are going to love the cheese. You know what? People even having Eurovision parties across the continent might think, oh, banger alert, and vote for it. I don't know. Um, I don't think it's going to light anything up particularly, but it could be pretty great. However, it's interesting you said Lucy Jones a minute ago, Chris, because I think the other version could be revamped to that level. Because Lucy Jones, when we heard that studio, was we were all like, oh, God, what is this? But damn, in Kiev, that is the proudest I've ever been to be a British Eurofan in my life. And I am 27 years old. Um, I've watched this since 98, and that is the best performance I've seen. Um, so I think it would need a lot of work. But I think the other one could have a Lucy Jones thing on it. 
Like it could be revamped to be a bit more London grammar, I think was how I described it at the time with Lucy Jones. I think it really could be lifted that way. Are you talking about Sweet Lies? Yeah, the the acoustic version. Anisa's. Ah, Anisa's. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Um, is it, we were talking about Lucy Jones levels of epicness and I got lost. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> now listen, on our Instagram, it's only been about 90 minutes, but we've gotten around 2,200 votes for the three different song offs. And two of them are very close. Michael versus Holly, according to the Wee Wee Blogs Instagram users, Holly wins with 54% of the vote. In the Freaks showdown, Jordan wins with 52%. And in the, oh my lord, <laughs> in Sweet Lies, Carrie Ann wins with 74%. So it's not even close. So then let's overall... My question to you, who is the UK sending? I would suspect Michael. And I think, obviously, the, the thing we have to keep in mind is um, the expert jury, whoever that is, we don't know yet. They are sending the three, they're choosing the winners of the song off. So the public has no say in that. So depending on who it is, it could be anybody. But I suspect that Michael will win that song off and then will win and I think he'll probably have easier competition than he should have um, in the public vote final part of that. Mm. I agree with you. I think whilst Michael is my fourth out of six, I think he has got it in the bag. I think UK voters, like like you say, the public, like the Twitter fandom and the Euro fandom's favourites never win. So it ain't going to be Kerry Ann. I refuse to believe it is Kerry Ann, as much as I think that would be really fun. I genuinely, without question, think Michael is going. Um, yeah, I think kind of when it comes to the jury as well, I mean, it depends if they get someone like Rylan and Tom Fletcher or whatever again, people who are sort of relevant. Like if they get people who are relevant, it could be interesting. But if they get people who are not, yeah, it's no question. It's no question. Yeah, I agree with y'all. I think based on UK voting patterns domestically, Michael Rice probably has this. I'd prefer, and this is the second question for you, who would you like to go? I would like to see Carrie Ann with Sweet Lies simply because it's something Euro fans would have fun with. Because we're not going to win, so let's just send a great ambassador. And I think she seems chatty, fun, sassy, and I think she'd be great for UK you know, publicity or PR at a the time of Brexit. People will cast that to the side and say, let's keep them. Let's keep <laughs> Carrie Ann. My vote's for her. Yeah, 100%. She's my vote too. I would love to see it. I would love to party to it for the next four months of my life. More than happy to do that. And I genuinely wouldn't really care less if I didn't hear any of the other songs again, but I will, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, I do think Carrie Ann maybe should go, but my favourite is actually Holly Tandy, um, because it is just so much more current. I think it's got a lot of potential on a revamp, which if they go like Lucy Jones kind of revamp, it's good. If they go Surrey revamp, it could go bad. Um, but whilst I think Surrey is magnificent, um, but I think that has got the most potential because whatever wins, it needs a bit of a tweak. I think, I think Holly's has got the most potential on a tweak. So that's why I would love her okay. to go. Well, that is what we think. What do you think? You can let us know here on Wee Wee Blogs. Is there a Eurovision winner in the bunch? Is there a song that could be a winner if it's revamped? Please let us know down below. Make sure to hit that like button. And subscribe to the channel. Oh my gosh, we're approaching 70K. Please take us there. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.